It's the Microsoft Product Fair 2007, and I have found the Microsoft Research Booth with Jay Lorch. And Jay Lorch is working on a product that all of you gamers, myself included, are uh, going to be excited to hear about. It's called Donnybrook, right? Now, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about what Donnybrook is? Donnybrook is a project we're working on in Microsoft Research about how to make games more epic. We want to take games like Halo, Counter-Strike, and scale them beyond what they can uh, do now. Now, instead of playing with 16 or 32 players, we're imagining games with hundreds if not a thousand players at once. And are you focusing on first-person shooters? Because the games you mentioned are shooters. Yeah. We're focusing on first-person shooters and or more generally very latency sensitive games where okay. you want to be in the action and, it, 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 and you can whip around and interact with somebody else at a moment's notice. So now this would vary or this would differ from, uh, we're talking World of Warcraft or you know EverQuest or something like that where there technically are millions of people playing at the same time but the difference being... That's true, yes. In World of Warcraft there's millions of people playing in theory, but they're all on different worlds and you're interacting with a small subset of them at any given time. Okay. We're talking about a massive battle, like but imagine the Battle of Helm's Deep, where every orc and every archer and every wizard is played by a separate person somewhere on the internet, and you can see the entire battle, and you can interact with all of them and shoot any one of them at any time. At any so you're talking like hundreds of people playing on the same field, each uh, operated by a human at the same time. That's right. That's All right. How are you going to make that happen? Okay, well, <laughs> so the big limitation there is bandwidth. People playing at home, they have a cable modem, they have a DSL line, they don't have a lot of up bandwidth and so if you want if you try to play a game with too many players and too little bandwidth it looks like this it's choppy it's lagging I'm here and then I'm here and then I'm here and that's not fun that's right it's not fun it doesn't look fun it's not enjoyable to play and, and you it's not accurate it's not you don't know where people are and uh, that's right and over but over here we have an illustration of uh, what the game looks like with our techniques so we got the same simulated network conditions people are playing on, on with very little bandwidth and a lot of players and and yet it looks very smooth and realistic and it's fun to play. We've had user studies where they come and play our game and they, and they love it. Okay, so how have you overcome the lack of bandwidth and yet still maintain a uh, fluid action? So, uh, the main... Without getting too, too technical, we're not Channel 9, we are Channel 10, but, uh, you know, give us a basic... How are people going to feel comfortable in believing this? It's, it sounds a little bit like a little, you know, what do they say? Kaka poo poo? All right, I'll give you a quick overview. So we figure out, we have heuristics to figure out who you're paying most attention to. Okay. Like who you're looking at, who you've recently shot, or who okay. shot you. And those people, we, we call them be your focus set. Those people send you updates every frame and they tell you exactly where they are. Everybody else just tells you occasionally where they are. So the people you're paying most attention to, you know exactly where they are and they're rendered perfectly. So is this based on some sort of like uh, psychiatry? Like apparently I have a vengeance against, let's say, I don't know, Tina. So and, I, and I'm chasing this one person down. What if I decide to just be completely random and chase anyone in my sight? So it, we have it's heuristics based on not your particular psyche, but uh, but on the actions uh, on, on the actions you're taking in the game, okay. where you're focused your weapon, what you've do, what you've done with your weapon, and if you decide to shift your focus to somebody else, uh, then we will our heuristics will notice that and uh, start having them send you updates frequently. How many people will be sending you uh, the the rapid updates at, at, at any given time? Is there a limitation? Uh, we found that four or five was a good number. Four or five. So and then the rest send them slower and then they're staggered out, or is it all rapid, rapid updates and then? So everyone else is sending you updates infrequently, okay. which might lead you to think, well, why isn't, why aren't all the people in the background really, really choppy? Because they're sending you updates even less frequently than there. Right. And that's where our other technique comes in, which we call guidable AI. Okay. So. Uh, those people who are sending you updates infrequently, you simulate them locally with a bot. Okay. It's a computer-controlled player, but unlike a regular bot with a regular AI, yeah. we call it a guided AI because it's taking guidance about how it should act from the human that it's emulating. So it's pretending to be this human, but it's got its own rudimentary smarts about how it should act to behave naturally. Really? So in theory, on my screen, way off in the distance, I have you being guided, uh, being a guided bot. And on your screen, would you see me also being a guided bot, but with That's different... Right. Uh, if I'm not paying attention to you, then <gasps> you're just... then. You're <laughs> For shame! 
That's right. I'm always paying attention to you. But if I'm not paying attention to him, right. then he's uh, then he's a bot on my screen. When I start paying attention to him, then he's going to start sending me updates, and I'll see where he That's where he is. Awesome. But as long as he's in my periphery, you know, he's not exactly where he's supposed to be. But he's acting realistically. Right, but you're not paying attention to him anyway. Now, the most important thing is just that it not distract me, it not be jumping around unrealistically. It's realistic enough so as not to distract me from what my focus is, which is you. That's awesome. Hey, you're learning. You're good. You're good. Now, will this work on any first-person shooter game? Have you tried it out over multiple different um, avenues? Or how's, we, we, how far are we along in the testing process? Uh, we've only uh, simulated on Quake 3, but we see no reason why these techniques couldn't be used in uh, general first-person shooter Absolutely. games. And now, you're calling it Donnybrook. Is this going to be, you know, a free service? Or where will people learn about this? Or is that way far from the distance? Well, we haven't gotten there. So, do, so the current techniques, we have uh, a paper about them, and uh, you can read the, and you can download the paper. It's freely available and learn how to apply these techniques to your games. And uh, we're working on uh, techniques in the future that uh, are going to be even more generic that we can release, uh, that we can have something that can be just used by any game. These techniques are principles that you can use in the design of your game. Very cool. So let me ask you, how much time in your average workday is spent just playing games? <laughs> you, we, no, we can be honest now. Well, uh, that's what we have interns for. Oh. <laughs> and actually... Right now, we've got 8 million people live searching to see if Microsoft Research is hiring interns. <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much. It's called Donnybrook, and you guys can download the paper and read all about it and hopefully uh, use it in practice. Thank you. Thank you. Much.